Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome all the students to another video lecture of Abdullah Sunawla Tutorials. And in this video lecture, we are going to discuss the colligative property which is osmotic pressure. Shown with the symbol pi. Now what is osmotic pressure? Suppose that we have a U-shaped tube having two arms or two limbs and here between the two limbs there is a membrane which is called as the semi-permeable membrane what is meant by the semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane is a membrane that allows the solvent particles to pass through but the solute particles they cannot pass through it so through the semi permeable membrane solvent molecules can pass but the solute particles they cannot pass through it. Now, at one side of this U-shaped tube, there is a very dilute solution. And this one is dilute aqueous solution actually. On the other side, there is a relatively concentrated aqueous solution and in between these two solutions here is the semi permeable membrane now you know very well that water or any solvent always moves from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration so here again because this is the dilute solution it will be having get greater quantity of the water so water will try to move from dilute solution to the concentrated solution and when <coughs> water moves from dilute solution to concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane then this process will be called as osmosis so the movement of the water molecules from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration through a semi permeable membrane that is called as osmosis. You will see that the level of solution in this compartment that will start rising. Why it starts rising? Because some of the water molecules they move from dilute solution side to the concentrated solution side. So that is the osmosis. It is natural. It will take place. But now listen very carefully. If you want to prevent the flow of water from dilute solution towards the concentrated solution what you will have to do you will have to apply some pressure here some pressure will be required to prevent the inward flow of water from the area of dilute solution towards the area of the concentrated solution and the minimum pressure which is required to prevent the flow of water from dilute solution towards concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane that minimum pressure will be called as osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is the minimum amount of the pressure which is required to prevent the flow of solvent from the area of dilute solution towards the area of concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane that is called as osmotic pressure a uh, simply you can say that osmotic pressure is the pressure which is applied on the concentrated solution side for what purpose to nullify the process of osmosis So osmotic pressure is the minimum amount of the pressure which is required to 
nullify the process of osmosis or you may say which is required to prevent the flow of solvent from the dilute solution towards the concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane that is the osmotic pressure actually now how can we calculate the osmotic pressure there is a formula which is called as vent hof equation this equation is used to find the osmotic pressure and according to this equation osmotic pressure is equal to i c into rt where pi is the osmotic pressure i is called as vent hof index it is simply a constant it is a dimensionless quantity where c is the molar concentration molar concentration mean concentrations in mole per liter or moles per decimeter cube r is the ideal gas constant and what is t that is the absolute temperature means temperature on the kelvin scale so through this formula you can find the osmotic pressure now listen very carefully that here this formula shows that osmotic pressure is only related to the concentration i is vent hof index it is a constant dimensionless quantity r is general gas constant so it is also a constant quantity and when you are studying the osmotic pressure at a particular temperature then t will also become constant so it means that osmotic pressure simply depends on the concentration of the solution or the amount of the solute in the solution so it will be a colligative property because it only depends on the concentration now the next thing very important listen it this formula is only used to find the osmotic pressure of the dilute solutions or you can say that this formula is only applicable to the ideal solutions i have already told you in the previous lectures that a dilute solution is very close to the ideality so this formula is only applicable when the solution is dilute or ideal solution or near to the ideality but if a solution is more concentrated then how its osmotic pressure will be calculated in that case you will have to replace this molar concentration with the molal concentration so this equation is only for ideal solution but if you want to make it applicable to the concentrated solutions you will have to take the molal concentration in terms of molality instead of molarity so <clears throat> that formula will be called as the morse equation so if you are using molar concentration it is vent hof equation but it is only applicable to the dilute solution and if you replace this concentration with the molal concentration or molality then that formula will be applicable to the non ideal or concentrated solution and that will be called as the morse equation then that formula will not be called as vent hof equation rather that formula will be called as the morse equation now let us move forward to some important points there are three types of the environments the first is the case in which we say that a cell is present in an isotonic environment the second case is when we say that a cell is present in a hypertonic solution or hypertonic environment and the third case is when we say that a cell is present in the hypotonic solution or the hypotonic environment first of all listen that the term tonicity
simply refers to the concentration so iso mean same tonic mean concentration so isotonic solution is the solution in which the concentration of solute is same as that of the intracellular solution intracellular solution mean the solution which is present inside the cell so the solution which is present inside the cell that will be called as the intra cellular solution an isotonic solution is the one having same concentration as that of the intracellular solution so in that case the solvent entering into the cell and the solvent leaving the cell that will be in equal quantity and you will say that there is no effect on the cell and this is the ideal case for all the cells biologically it is an ideal case that a cell that must be present in isotonic environment in that case the cell will remain intact and the infusions which are given to the patients like the normal saline or the glucose or dextrose solution they are made sure that these infusions should be isotonic with the human body and they must be isotonic with the red blood cells or other cells which are present in the blood so that the blood cells must remain intact but if we say that a cell is present in hypertonic environment so hyper mean greater tonic mean concentration hypertonic mean that this cell is present in a concentrated solution as compared to its own intracellular matrix so this solution is a concentrated solution in which the cell is present and the intracellular solution of the cell that is dilute as compared to the extracellular solution in which it is present in that case water will move out of the cell through x osmosis why because the intracellular solution is dilute and this extracellular is relatively concentrated so through x osmosis the water will move from dilute solution towards the concentrated solution in that case the cell will shrink and finally it will be dead and this happens when some bacteria or some microorganism it tries to grow on a very concentrated medium like jams and jellies so keep in mind <coughs> keep in mind that the chances of the microorganisms to to grow on a concentrated solution that is very much less as compared to the dilute solutions bacteria and other microorganisms they can they do not usually grow on the jams and jellies because they are highly concentrated media and ex osmosis of the bacterial cell that will cause the damage to the cell and the bacteria will finally die now when we say that a cell is present in the hypotonic environment it simply means that the outer solution in which the cell is present or the solution in which the cell is present that is dilute as compared to the intracellular solution so in this case the water will move from dilute solution to concentrated solution and water will move inside the cell what will be the result if that is a plant cell it will be very important for the plant cells because in that case the turgor pressure or turgidity in the plants is maintained but if it is an animal cell you know that the animal cells they do not have cell wall so there will be chances that the animal cell can burst and even it is sometime performed practically that a red blood cell is placed in a very hypotonic solution and the red blood cell due to end osmosis of water it keeps on swelling and finally it bursts and what happens all the intracellular matrix of the red blood cell will be released and it will help to study the intracellular contents of the red blood cell especially the hemoglobin and the structure of the hemoglobin so sometime it is very favorable to place red blood cell in the hypotonic environment and let it burst to study its intracellular matrix so this these were the three types of the environments biologically in which a cell may be present this case is the ideal case this case will cause the death of the cells due to shrinkage or plasmolysis and in this case if that is a plant cell turgid pressure will be maintained but if it is an animal cell there are chances that the cell can burst 
Now there is another very important feature which is a very commonly observed practical application of the osmotic pressure and that is the reverse osmosis RO reverse osmosis <clears throat> reverse osmosis is a process which is usually used to desaline the sea and ocean water in that case just let me draw a schematic diagram to make you understand what that what is the reverse osmosis actually in that particular case you will take sea water in a compartment and in the next compartment you will take the pure water and these two chambers they will be separated by a semi permeable membrane now obviously the water will try to move from the pure side to the sea water side this will be a natural process that will be called as osmosis but here we are not going to perform the osmosis but here the reverse osmosis will be performed so water will not be made to move from the pure water side to the sea water side but here large amount of the pressure is applied on the side of the sea water what happens now the water starts moving from sea water towards the pure water why because here the pressure is very much large so water will move from the sea water to the pure water and keep in mind i have already told you that the semi permeable membrane will not allow the solute particles to pass through it so the water will easily travel from sea water towards the pure water and the salt which is a solute that will not be able to cross this semi permeable membrane and it will remain in this compartment so that is called as the reverse osmosis because through osmosis water should move to this side but we are exactly doing the reverse of the osmosis by applying the high pressure on the sea water side so salt will remain in this chamber and the pure water that will move to the other side in this way the salt and water they can be separated and this is a very commonly applied method especially the areas where the sea water is available the sea water is the only option to use for the domestic purposes then that in that areas the sea water is desalined by using the, the process of the reverse osmosis so that is again very important so osmotic pressure is a colligative property because it is just related to the concentration of the solute and not on any other factor secondly osmotic pressure is very important to maintain the isotonic environment for the body to prepare the isotonic solutions to use in the form of infusions then to study the intracellular material of the cells by placing the cells in the hypotonic environment and then through osmotic pressure the turgid pressure or turgidity in the plant cells is maintained and even the osmotic pressure concept is used in the reverse osmosis to make the sea water free of salts so this was all about the osmotic pressure take care all of this